Hey you all, I hope your day is going great. In this video you will learn how to extract common setup code into their own function and how to measure test coverage. As you can see we are using this mix of blend line twice right here and right here as well. And really it's not part of the main function behavior. It's just some code that we need in order to run this line because as you can see we are relying on having an object with the private key of 1. And if we didn't run this line to create one with the private key of 1 then there wouldn't be would be none so of course it will fail. And also we are instantiating the request factory object in on, in two different places and you know there's some room for improvement as well in regards to performance. So PyTest works quite well with the standard unit test module which Django uses by default and we can go to the top and import test case. So that's inside of Django.test. We can just import test case. And then from our class, we can subclass from test case. And by doing so, we are granted access to a method which is called setup class. And everything that we put inside of that function will be run in every, you know, before running all of these other functions inside of this class. So dev setup class and this one takes in the actual class instance. And first of all we need to call the actual setup class of this test case and to get access to it we need to call super test views and pass in the class dot setup class. And this really just calls setup class of this test case and then we can override everything that we want to do after that. And the first thing is this line because that, you know, we only need to instantiate it once really because we are using the same object here and here. Both should have the private key of one. Get rid of that one. And then also this request factory, we can extract that. And now we want to set class so I'm just going to call this factory equal to request factory and then inside of our single functions we can call self dot factory and in here also self dot factory and that should work and now what we need to do is give this setup class the decorative class method and this is because we want to get the class you know parameter passed and the class method will take care of that for us. And now we can just enter the terminal again and run pytest. And as you can see, it still runs the same way it did before. Only that we are instantiating the request factory object once and also this mixer.blend once. And if we have like one or 200 separate test functions, it should run faster this way because we are only doing it once, as I said. So next up, we want to set up the test coverage report and for this one, we already installed the package in the first part. So just simply go into your term terminal. And now you can type in pytest and add the dash dash coverage flag. And as you can see, we get a total coverage report and the coverage is at 100% and all of the files which are being tested are displayed right here. And there's one more option we can set, which is pytest dash dash coverage. And then we can set it equal to a path which we want specified and if we set it to dot it will get all of the files. But as you can see there are three files which have a 0% test coverage which are manage.py and apps.py and also this wsgi.py. And these three files really we don't want tested so that will, you know, PyTest is smart enough to figure that out that we shouldn't test these and it doesn't by default so that will be fine. And so we don't need to specify the dash dash coverage option every time. We can go into the pytest or any file and use the add options, add opts for short, and set it equal to dash dash coverage. And then we can specify another argument called dash dash coverage report equal to HTML. And this will basically just take care of exporting our entire coverage report into HTML format. And then it will give us a file or a directory as you're going to see in a minute. So now back in the terminal, we only need to run PyTest. And as you can see, we get this HTML coverage folder. 
And inside of that, there's an index.html file. And I find that the most convenient way of opening this is to use an Atom plugin. If you haven't installed it already, you can just go to File, then to Settings, and to Install. And then you just simply search for Atom HTML Preview. And then hit Install on this one. And if that is done, you can open the index.html file and just simply hit Control, Shift and H. And if you did that correctly, you should see this window popping up and we get our entire coverage report and just can browse all of the files and see which ones are being executed. But of course, we don't want to test the coverage of our test files because that wouldn't really make any sense because that should always be 100% basically because those are the files that are always being executed by us running the test. So just go back and I'm just going to close this file and the pytest.ini file. And then we can go into the main directory and create another file called .coverage.rc. And this one also uses the .ini syntax and the .ini syntax works by first of all specifying a section and this one is called run. And then we have normal key value pairs and the key in this case is going to be the omit and we can set equal to all of the directories we want to omit from our coverage report. And those are first of all the star slash tests and everything that is inside of the tests directories in general should be avoided. And then we also have the migrations, which we don't really need to include in our test coverage report. And that should basically be it because of course the wsgi.py, apps.py and manage.py should be excluded by default. And just open it up again and run pytest. Then we can go back into the HTML coverage folder and just open up index.html again by pressing Control shift h and you will see that we successfully got rid of the test files in our test coverage report. And you know, that's about it for this part. We set up test coverage so you can measure all of the tests. And I'm just going to show you real quickly how that would look if we didn't have 100% test coverage. So just get rid of these two functions and run, then run pytest. And you see it dropping down to 95% and this views the pile file only has 67%. You can open that one. And you can see these two lines marked red because these ones weren't executed of course because we don't have tests for them. But if we insert them back again and rerun pytest, we get 100% as we want it. So make sure to stick around for the next part where we are probably going to be covering fixtures. And until then, make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed and cheers.